Hey everybody, my name is Malisha McGregor and I'm a developer advocate at DVC, which is completely unrelated to this talk, but we do machine learning stuff over there. But today I'm going to talk to you about how you can use JavaScript to find your dog. I'm pretty excited about this. So my slides will move. Okay. I always like to do a quick overview at the beginning of every talk, just so y'all kind of know when to tune in and tune out, but hopefully this one keeps your interest for a while. So first we'll go over the project and kind of the motivation behind using JavaScript to try to find your dog. Then I'll talk a little bit about the hardware behind it. If you have an old Arduino, you can dust that off and we'll go over making the node server to interface with our Arduino and a front end app, which will be super basic. And finally, I'll wrap up with just a few key things that I hope you'll take away from this today. So let's talk about this project. The main thing is definitely a personally driven problem. So sometimes my dog likes to disappear. I know that he's somewhere around. He's probably in the house. Maybe he locked himself in a room or something. He's been known to, and he won't bark. He won't scratch at a door. He won't make a noise. It's unnerving because he's absolutely quiet right now. When you really need them to just make a noise, anything would do. And the best part is usually they're not where you think they'll be. Like sometimes they have their favorite places. Sometimes they're just in the abyss. <laughs> you don't know where they could have possibly gone and you need something to help you find them. So that is where this project comes from. And now this is kind of the fun part, the, harder to show part, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a brief second so that y'all can actually see my camera because I got some hardware to show you. It's been a while since I got to show off hardware. I'm excited. But let me unplug the thing and hope that doesn't break everything <laughs> for later on. And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little risky and see if I remember which pins these things go to. But first, we just have a regular old Arduino Uno. It's something that I've had left over in, you know, those projects that we all say we're gonna get to. But we'll be using the pins on this side down here. It's just power for our Bluetooth little module we'll be plugging in and up here yeah up here is where we'll plug in like the beeper so just putting that out there and then here's the little bluetooth module it's nothing really that you know i can't describe what's happening in this circuit it's just doing bluetooth stuff and here we have just a little beeper just you know power ground, nothing too fancy, but I'm going to, oh, also power source. There are just four AAA batteries in here, and I'm going to use those to power the Arduino. That's what makes it portable, so you can put it in any type of container that you can latch onto your dog that they might not break or tear off or whatever dogs get into. So I'm going to go ahead and plug things back up. Hopefully I do it in the right order. Always ground first, right? So I'm going to get my pins all in here. This part is always so much fun because how often do web developers actually get to work with hardware? It's not very often, so I savor these moments. But I digress there. Let me finish plugging in stuff. So hopefully this will all work. 
Mm. And I think this pin should be the last word. Okay, so I'm gonna try to show this again. And it just looks like a jumble of stuff, but you can see the Bluetooth module thing is blinking. The Arduino has a light on up there. And all of this is just gonna go in a box. Like, I don't have any fancy material or like a CNC machine to make a nice container for my dog finder, but you can do those things if you choose. So now that you've seen the hardware and hopefully it doesn't look that intimidating to set up, there's a little bit of firmware you'll have to download onto the Arduino Uno, but it comes built into the IDE that you use to set up the Arduino. So you don't have to write any crazy like header code or anything. But let me go back to sharing my screen because now y'all have seen the magical hardware. All right, so next we can get into a little bit of code. So this is where the actual fun part happens. Let me make sure, yeah, my thing isn't beeping obnoxiously so I can actually leave it plugged in until the demo. Okay, so now we'll talk about the node server itself. There are only a few different packages we need to use to make this entire thing work. Um, concurrently, I'm just using that to run a few different commands at the same time. Cores, you know, don't want those cores errors popping up when you have an IoT device that's life or death with your dog, even. Hopefully it's not life or death, but if it is, you don't want a cores issue holding you up from finding your buddy. And we're just going to set up a regular old Express app, so nothing fancy there. But then we'll get into Johnny5. So Johnny5 is the library that we're going to use to actually interface our web app with our hardware. Like, it's, it's just going to be super easy and nice. And then path, because, you know, got to do path stuff. But before... Actually, before I get too far ahead of myself, let me show you some code because I want you to see how this is all set up and working. Okay, can y'all see my VS Code window? Good. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger just so y'all can read things. But, um, shrink that down. Okay. So what we've got going on here, you know, we're importing some packages, nothing too fancy there. Setting up a port because you want to make sure you're calling the right port from your front end and eh, regular stuff. This is where we get into our IoT world. Right here, we're setting up a new board object, and the board is referring to our Arduino. So you aren't bound to just Arduino if you use the Johnny5 library. I'm pretty sure it works with Raspberry Pi and maybe some of the other like PIC controllers. But the main thing you need here is the port number that your device is on. This is another thing that you can get from your Arduino IDE. There's like a settings thing that'll just tell you which port you're on. A lot of times if you're on Windows, it's going to be COM3 or COM4. If you're on a Mac or Linux, it'll be something else. But I like to make things difficult. So of course, this is on Windows. But after that, just a few little things we define. We have some APIs going on down here. But this is where the fun happens. So we are saying, hey, when our board is ready, we need to get this location on the board. Right now, I'm just classifying it as an LED because the beeper just has an on and off, basically. It doesn't need anything fancier than that. But 
I think there might be some more um, classes that you can use for different like hardware pieces. But for us, we just need to instantiate our beeper so we can use it in our API calls. And down here, again, we're just defining the API. This is the endpoint we're gonna call to start the beep. When we push a button, it'll just trigger this on, which will send that voltage to the um, beeper through the Arduino. And then down here, we have another endpoint to stop the beeper and that'll just cut that off. So that is how you set up an IoT node server. That's it, just a couple of endpoints, a few method calls and one really good library. So now that we have our backend set up, let me switch back very briefly and we can talk about the front end which now I'll go back to the code again, but the front end is super simple. Like this is the first time in a long time I haven't used a JavaScript framework. It is just HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. But the HTML part's not that interesting. It's just a couple of buttons and some text. Where the real stuff happens is here in the JavaScript file, so you see we get our buttons from the document we get them from the dom and we just add a few event listeners here for when you click on them and those call our endpoints that's all so if i'm gonna stop this because i have confidence that this will still run if i try it again so I'm going to do npm start and I guess needed to do that, but oh, oh, what is it doing? Is it not one? To, it's always something with the demo. It worked two seconds ago and now it wants to fail. Um, let me see if maybe Maybe I unplug something. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay. So ignore the fact that you just heard it beep. <laughs> that was a bad pin connection. Okay. So now we got that going. The hardware still works. Um, everything's ready. Okay. Now I finally got the right thing. So I'll share this tab in my browser and you can see our super basic front end interface. The way that it works is exactly what you see. So when I click the button, it should signal the thing to start beeping. Let me make sure all my pins are in here good. And Okay. okay, now let's see if off works. Okay, sweet. So I know you couldn't see the hardware right there, but there's really not a whole lot to see. It's just what I showed you a little bit earlier with the beep working. So if I turn it on, it should beep. Whoop, there, there. My pin connections aren't that great right now. I probably should have stripped a little bit more wire off of them. But, okay. Okay, there's the beat. And it's gone. So, yeah, I'm not going to keep playing that beep. It's not the best thing to hear. <laughs> so, let me go back and share my slides again but um yeah so the front end super easy to set up um trying to think that's really it for setting up this whole iot thing 
I guess I'll leave more time for questions if y'all want to see demos and stuff, but let's just get into some key takeaways real quick. So first thing, just do fun stuff. Like it doesn't all have to be about the shiniest new technology or the coolest framework or whatever is cutting edge. What personal problems do you have that you think you might be able to fix with JavaScript or just programming in general? Like it could be any little silly idea you have. And I do believe you can do everything with JavaScript. You can do machine learning, IoT, you can do robots, you can do pretty much whatever. It might not be the most efficient language, but you can definitely hobble something together with it. And then something that I encourage, oh, if you work with software in general, I encourage you to try to do something with hardware. Like it just presents a different set of challenges. We're used to things breaking in production and we just push up another change. But with hardware, what happens if you do have a, fa a faulty pin connection? You'll have to debug a different way and start just searching for answers differently than you would. It gives you, I don't know, just a slightly different perspective when you go back to the pure software world. And don't be afraid to explore new areas of tech. So quantum computing is coming, blockchain is coming. It's here technically, but quantum computing could break that one day. I digress though. But just don't be afraid to touch those new areas of tech. You can't get it wrong. You're just trying new stuff. And who knows, you might end up making something really cool and spin off a startup from it that you didn't expect. <laughs>